morning, Franklin High School. My name is Nicole. And I'm Natalie. Today we are serving you the new lunch menu, delicious salsa from the Pro Start class, as well as getting to know a few of our standout teachers. Recently, Mrs. Champion's Pro Start cooking class had a salsa tasting contest to raise funds for the Pro Start organization. During all three lunches, teachers were invited to taste salsa made by the students in the Pro Start cooking class. They were then asked to order their favorite salsa. Pro Start is actually a national class uh, sponsored by the National Restaurant Association. And uh, in addition to classwork, there's a competition that's in March. We participated in it last year, and we're going to be participating in it again this year. So the students selected four different salsas and uh, prepared them, and then we had a taste testing by staff that would like to come and taste them and then potentially buy them. So we sold them and asked for a donation if they wish. The money raised will be used to purchase uniforms and equipment for cooking competitions against other schools. ProStart is a good class for students interested in pursuing a cooking career. For more information, contact Mrs. Champion. Everybody is aware of the new lunch changes, and it's safe to assume that many students are not fans of losing their beloved cookies and nachos. Let's turn to Malik to see what's behind these new changes. New standards align school meals with the latest nutrition science to form healthier lifestyles for the next generation. It's a national program, and so um, it looked at the entire country to change the way that food is prepared. The chips and cookies are gone. The bread is always wheat and the foods are all under 200 calories. However, many students do not like the change. I'm not a fan of this change because uh, everything is just nasty now. Are you aware of why they changed? For less obesity kids, maybe, probably. 72 million are considered obese, not just overweight, which is the combined population of Australia and Canada. Maybe the lunches did need a change, probably. At least put the cookies back how they were. <laughs> Overall, because of the growing health concerns in our youth, the national guidelines for school lunches were set and implemented across the U.S. Not only does our society care about what teens are eating, but also their problems with substance abuse. This year, the Franklin Area Parents and Students United hosted a meeting to raise awareness for the growing problem of drugs in society and in our own community. Heroin in the Suburbs was an event that recently started with a resource fair, giving the parents and students an opportunity to look at different organizations who provide information about drug use. Uh, there's a, a perception that heroin is a problem of the inner city, uh, places where many of our suburban folks don't go, but er actually heroin is more of a problem in suburban areas these days than it has been in the past. So it's, it's something that people need to be aware of uh, and understand. Heroin in the Suburbs took place in the auditorium where the audience listened on how to keep themselves and their loved ones safe from all type of drugs, most of all heroin. There was guest speakers including a recovering heroin addict, a Franklin police officer, and even Mayor Steve Olson. For more information about the risks, effects, and information about the event, visit FAPSU.org. Most of you know him as the advisor to NHS, Saber Slate, Yearbook, and Academic Decathlon. But how well do you really know Mr. Nesheim? Mr. Nettersheim reads between the lines that are between the lines. If Mr. Nettersheim were a work of literature, he'd be a dictionary. Mr. Nettersheim's favorite flavor of yogurt is Shakespeare. Mr. Nettersheim's junior research paper is now on display at the Library of Congress. Mr. Nettersheim is pen pals with Stephen King. Mr. Nettersheim can recite an entire Shakespearean play in 2.3 seconds. It has been said that Mr. Nettersheim is the Greek god of literature. Mr. Nettersheim is the uncredited author of thousands of American classics, including Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, 
and Dr. Seuss's Cat in the Hat. Mr. Nesheim trained his dog to read in four different languages. Like a good neighbor, Mr. Nettersheim is there. All this time, I never knew Mr. Nettersheim was keeping all these secrets. Make sure the next time you see Mr. Nettersheim, you congratulate him on being the first member of the Literary Hall of Fame. A few other standout teachers literally stood out last fall during the 2013 Homecoming Pep Rally. Mr. Weiske shocked Ms. Molitor with a creative marriage proposal, allowing the students and staff to share the experience. Since then, there's one question on our minds. Where's the Weiskies? Ms. Molitor has been a math teacher at the high school, and Mr. Weiske has been a gym teacher at the middle school, each for six years. They first met at the middle school while Mrs. Molitor was the Palms coach, and Mr. Weiske was the athletic director and coach. The famous proposal started out as a joke, but the more Mr. Weiske thought about it, the timing was perfect. It's been nice that everyone's been really supportive and keep asking about our wedding and was part of it from the very beginning with our engagement here. It was nice that kids were involved. With little time for planning the wedding, the Weiske surprisingly didn't find it stressful. I pretty much planned the whole wedding and I pretty much made everything for it from the programs, to the invitations, to the aisle decorations. But it was nice that it was on a beach, so it made it a little bit more casual. The perfect wedding was in Florida with about 80 people attending, including family, friends, and even some FHS teachers. Later, they had a second reception in Wisconsin with over 300 people for those who couldn't make it down to Florida. The Weiskies are planning to continue teaching in the Franklin School District and are looking forward to their honeymoon in December, along with a possible vacation during spring break. Congratulations to the Weiskies and thanks for sharing the excitement with all of us. Now before we leave you, we have this week's Uproar winners. These are students who have created a positive school environment through their actions. Teachers nominate deserving students and each week, two are chosen to receive a Sabre Pride t-shirt. I nominated Chris Chang for the Saber Uproar because he changed his attitude uh, so much this year towards the positive and not only did it affect his behavior in his classes but it also affected his grades in a positive manner. So keep it up Chris. Hi, I nominated Ben Wachter because he's an example of how everyone should act. As you know we have a lot of special needs students here at Franklin and he helped diffuse the situation when one student wasn't having a good day. He showed kindness not only to a special needs student, but to the other students in line so that they weren't delayed getting their lunch for the day. Congratulations to Chris and Ben for being this week's Uproar winners. For a list of the nominated students, check out the Sabre Slate. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode of the Sabre Roar. I'm Natalie. And I'm Nicole. Remember that it is now second quarter. Failure is only the opportunity to begin again, only this time more wisely. Choose wisely and work hard this quarter, and remember to watch the Sabre Roar. See you next Tuesday, Franklin.